Welcome, I'm Mr. Lennon. We're dealing with Circle Theorem today. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. We have a circle and we have some angles within the circle. We have, you can see that there's a triangle. And so therefore, you know that we're looking at the theorems in a circle. Well, one of the things we want to do is to identify what we have. Okay, so we have a triangle, as we notice. We have three sides that meet at the vertex. Triangle. Um, what kind of triangle is this? Is, is this an isosceles triangle or just a regular triangle that we can't determine? What kind? Well, let's look at it. Do we have uh, any of the sides being from the center of the circle? Well, uh, well, the center of the circle is right here, as so we can identify that quickly. And we do see a line from the center right to the circumference of the circle. We also see another line here that's try from the center from this from the circumference right also to the center of the circle. Okay, we can ignore this extra piece going right on, but the point is, is that this is a diameter really. It's starting from the from circumference. This line goes through the center and it continues right at the circumference. If we stop right here, we have a diameter. Okay, we wouldn't continue this extra piece. We can ignore that part. So from from the from the one part of the circle through the center, right to the, right to the circumference, we have a, a diameter. Okay. All right, so that's being said and done. We know that this a diameter is made up of two radii. So we have a radius here, and we have a radius here. So therefore, this triangle is actually an isosceles triangle. What do we know about an isosceles triangle? Well, in an isosceles triangle, uh, the base angles are equal because two sides are equal. So let's look at it. So let's say we have this triangle here. Okay. What we're saying is that if this side is equal to this side in length, then the angles that face, that's this side here. The angle that faces this side is this angle right here. And the angle right here that faces this side. Okay. So these, this angle here must be equal in length must be equal in, in magnitude, sorry, or size to this angle. So these two angles are the base angles. They're equal. The two sides are equal. The angles that face them are also equal. Okay, hope you get that. Clear enough. All right, so let's go on. So now we have identified that as an isosceles triangle. This side is equal to this side in terms of the, the, the isosceles triangle from the center going up here right there going right down to the center this side will be equal to this side the angles that face them are the base angles so um, this angle here actually faces this side and this angle here actually faces this side so the two angles that face the two equal sides are called the base angles so these two are the base angles so we can say angle a is equal to 34 degrees. And my reasoning is that these are um, isosceles triangle angles, base angles of an isosceles triangle. By the way, I'm spelling isosceles incorrect there. Let's go back over that quickly. So A is equal to 34 degrees. My reason is base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. That's the key point. Okay, that's the reason why I put A equal 34. So, now what is angle B? Well, that might be a little difficult to tell at the time, but there are several ways we can actually figure this out. Several ways we can figure this out. Okay. Let me just put back angle B here. All right, and put back angle A there. And so what we notice is that angle A is 34 degrees. I think I can take that out by time. I mean, if you figure that out, that's going to be 34 degrees, yeah? But notice something here about angle B. Angle B is actually at the center of the circle. Is that correct? What we have here, we have this arc, okay, it's known as an arc, 
any part of the, of the circumference is called an arc. So we have an arc there. It's like a bend, okay? We're driving around the bend. But the point though is, it's, it's part of a circle. It's called an arc. And the angle that the arc subtends to the center, we refer to it as a center angle. Okay, no biggie. But the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference that that is standing on the same arc. What angle is standing on the same arc? Well, this angle 34 degrees here has two legs. So we have one leg here. Okay, so let's, let's look at this as a leg. This angle right here, this angle 34. Think of this as a, as a person. Okay. And it has two legs. So we have this leg here. And it also has this leg going right down here as well. Okay. So this person is, okay, this leg is longer for sure. Okay, yeah. But this is the angle 34 degrees. All right. And it's standing on this. The two legs are standing on the same arc. Okay, let's call this arc, this point A, and this point down here B. Okay, this angle 34 degrees is standing on point A and point B. Is that true? And this angle right here, angle B, is also standing on point A and point B. So, if the two angles are standing on the same point, A and B, we can say that the angle that point A and B subtend to the center is twice the angle that's angle, but point A and B again subtend to the circumference. The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Therefore, angle B is equal to 34 times 2. Okay, what's the reason? Angle at the center, angle at center, I think I write a little neater, but uh, it's not affording me to write as nicely as I want to. I can say that angle at center is twice angle at circumference. Or certainly you can write this in your in your book a little better than I can. But the point though is, if this is 34, which is at the circumference, the angle of the center will be twice it, which is going to be um, 68, 2, 4, 8, 2, 3, 6, yes, 68 degrees. I don't want to forget your degree symbol, okay? It's a little circle, okay? Little tiny circle, not so big like a zero. Just a little tiny circle. All right? But here's another way we can find angle B, okay? It's another way we can find angle B. Let's see how we can find that another way. All right, well, remember this is a triangle. I'll take off this little guy here. Remember this is a triangle, All right? This is a triangle right here, an isosceles nice triangle. The sum of angles in the triangle is equal to 180 degrees, so I can find this angle right here. 34 plus 34, all right? So we can find this angle right here. Let's call this angle X. If I want to find angle X, how would I find that? It's going to be equal to 180 degrees. Take away the sum of 34 and 34. Okay? And that will give us 180 minus 68 degrees. 34 plus 34 is 68. Okay? So angle X will be equal to what? So let's check that out. 180 minus 68 is equal to 112 degrees. Okay, remember these three angles are inside of a triangle. They must add up to 180. If we know two of them, how do we find the third one? We add them up and subtract from 180 to find the remaining angle needed. So this angle X is equal to 112 degrees. Now, look at it. Angle X and B are separated by a straight line. If, they, if this straight line didn't exist, they would have formed a semicircle, basically, going right over. Okay, and once we know an angle is a semicircle, then we know it's 180 degrees. So X and B added together will give us 180 degrees. We say that these angles are angles on a straight line. They are adjacent angles on a straight line. They're next to each other. So therefore, angle B 
can be found by doing what? If I if I know these two angles add to 180 and we know one of them, to find the other we subtract from 180. So angle B is equal to 180 degrees minus 112 degrees and that will give us it's the same thing here, 180 minus 68 is 112, therefore 180 minus 112 must be 68. So angle B is equal to 68 degrees, just like we found up there. By saying angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Okay, hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. All the best in the next exam.